So good evening everybody and welcome to our online higher education and university open evening. Um, tonight's event is delivered on behalf of Stockport Council and hosted by Stockport Jobs Match. We've got an absolutely fantastic lineup of guest speakers joining us this evening and a really jam packed schedule um, to cover a range of topics about your options at 18 plus from university to degree apprenticeships, HNCs to employment. Uh, we'll be starting with a very quick overview of those different types of level four qualifications that you can study after college, a sixth form or completing an apprenticeship before coming on to how to prepare for university in terms of UCAS points, applications, student finance, personal statements, key dates for your diary and more, as well as a little note on work experience, future plans and support um, choosing your end career career destination. Uh, we are joined this evening by presenters from um, HEs and university uh, places across the northwest. So we have the University of Manchester, Manchester Metropolitan, Liverpool John Moores, Staffordshire University, University of Huddersfield, our own Stockport HE College. We have GM Hire as well as the apprenticeship store to talk about degree apprenticeships. Um, so um, tonight's event um, takes place as part of a suite of events for post 16 careers week 2022. Um, but that doesn't just mean that it's about making those choices um, about what happens when you leave secondary school. Post 16 very much does mean those choices at 18 plus two. Um, so while lots of our content throughout the course of this week has been geared towards um, those completing their GCSEs in the next two years, we also have a huge amount of content that's been created on behalf of Stockport Council to help you think about those next next steps as well. You can find all of that information on our website, stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk. If you click on the Careers Hub and then select Schools and Colleges, you'll find a wealth of information that's really useful right now. So we've got a range of different career guides for all different sectors, which contain uh, videos from local people talking about day in the life information of different careers, a really good insight into local labour market insights. So things about how different industries and career sectors have been affected during the course of the pandemic and what the future prospect for those industries looks like as well. Um, now, the reason that a lot of that information is relevant is if you're going to be applying to university or applying for a higher apprenticeship or even applying for a job, having some insight and knowledge about the sector and the line of work that you're looking to get into will prove incredibly useful. Um, we've also got um, a fantastic range of general student resources that include things like CV template, a personal statement template, a monthly budget planner, um, information on how to access work experience, information on UCAS tariff points, everything through to taking a gap year. Um, lots of virtual work experience opportunities are currently listed on there. We'll touch on that a little bit later. Apprenticeships are advertised on there as well as volunteering opportunities and part time jobs for students. You'll find free college leave CV templates, pathway planners, etc as well as information on alternative fully funded that's free courses that are available from 18 plus so if you decide to, to pursue a different route uh, for your um, continued education at 18 so after college or sixth form or you start something and things don't go according to plan you'll find things like the TikTok creativity project for catch 22 if you want to get into a career in media right through to things like get hired and team events um, to develop management and leadership skills from the Prince's Trust, from coding boot camps to short courses with Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue. So there's a little bit of everything on there. And um, also throughout the course of this week, we've been delivering every day at one o'clock some lunchtime live employer interviews. So whilst we've only got one of those left tomorrow, um, all of this week's sessions have been record recorded and will be published on our website the week after half term. 
So again, those are a really good opportunity for you to find out more about what different jobs involve. We've had everything from a quantity surveyor to a scientist, um, somebody who set up their own business, a retail worker, a social worker, an accountant, a solicitor. So again, really good things that you could cite on an application form to say that you've got that bit of industry knowledge. And the last one, as I mentioned, is tomorrow and we're going to be joined by a developer, an IT worker from CDL. Um, we've got a gentleman who set up um, his own leisure um, organisation, My Gym. And we've got somebody from Regeneration Brainery who organised work experience projects in the construction sector and Stockport Homes talking about careers in marketing and PR. So do join. All the details are on um, the website or by scanning the QR code. Um, so just to get started with this evening's topic then, um, in years 12 and 13 at college, that's who we're, we're primarily speaking to tonight, although I appreciate some 10 and 11 year students may be joining us as well, who maybe think that they need to know about that university choice when they're perhaps picking their A-level subjects, for example. Um, but when you're, you're at college or sixth form, it may feel like You've only just had to make a really big decision about where to study. And yet again, already you're being forced into making another big decision about what to do when all of that finishes and you've only just got started. So it can feel a little bit overwhelming and there's lots of different questions that you'll be asked about it, some of which are on screen at the moment. Uh, needless to say, it's really good to find out more about the support available, to research all of the different options thoroughly so that you can make an informed decision about what's right for you but also so that you know what that plan b might be just in case things don't go according to plan whether that be because you don't get the results that you need or whether that be because you go down a particular path and you realize that you don't like it one of the things that we've learned this week in some of the career sessions that we've held is that there's lots of different ways to end up doing that same end career goal whether you want to be a doctor or a construction worker there's lots of different avenues and different types of qualifications applications that can still get you to the same place in the end. Um, so just to get started this evening, we've got a little short video about video that covers what all of the different options are at um, 18 plus. Um, so we're going to start with that and then we're going to come on to um, talk about um, UCAS applications. When you turn eight, oh, sorry, I've just paused it to make it go full screen. One second. 18, whether you're finishing college, sixth form, a training course or apprenticeship, there's lots of options on offer. What's right for you will depend on your personal circumstances, what you enjoy or are good at, together with the career goals or job aspirations you have in mind. If you've just completed a level three qualification, like A-levels, T-levels, BTECs or an apprenticeship, you may decide to continue your studies at level four or above. This is called higher education, and it could include studying for things like HNC or HND, a higher or degree apprenticeship, a foundation or postgraduate degree. You can study these at university, at a HE college, an IOT or a national college, full-time, part-time or online. If you decide to leave full-time education, you might be ready to get a job, develop new skills and start earning a wage. You could apply for an internship, volunteer or find a work placement. You can find temporary or part-time work to gain experience and earn some cash whilst you're figuring out what you want to do longer term or start applying for your dream job straight away. You might want to start your own business or even take a gap year before you make up your mind. Or you may decide to combine the two with part-time study and part-time employment. School leaver schemes, traineeships, apprenticeships and supported internships are all a mix of practical on-the-job skills training with off-the-job learning and qualifications. Plus, there's also a range of accredited and non-accredited courses that could help you get job ready, build confidence or leadership skills, for example, or pre-employment courses where you have a guaranteed interview with an employer on completion. Whatever you decide is the right next step for you. 
Remember that you have the option to change your mind later. There's a range of funding available until the age of 25 in most cases, and there's lots of different ways to reach the same end career goal if one route doesn't work out as planned. There we go. So just a bit of an overview of lots of different options and to really enforce the fact that there are lots of different routes available, some of which you may have not heard of and might be worth having a look into. Um, so just to run through um, the most common options um, of um, what you can choose after you finish college or sixth form. These aren't the only ones, as I've mentioned, um, but just to make you aware that largely what you study at college, so uh, an A level, a T level, a BTEC, an NVQ or an apprenticeship at this stage is largely to be a level three. GCSE is a level two. The next step is level three. So what you're looking at next is a level four to a level six qualification. And broadly speaking, there's these main four options. So you've got your honours degree, the traditional route that people think of, your Bachelor of Arts and your Bachelor of Science degrees that you apply for at university. They usually take three to four years studying full time, but you can study them part time and you apply for those via a UCAS application. There is also a foundation degree. Now, this is a bit more of a vocational practical learning. You do still study it at college or university, but involves a work placement. It's written in partnership with kind of employers and HE providers. And it's usually a two year course that you have the option then to top up into a full degree course. You've got the option of higher and degree apprenticeships that we're going to talk in more detail about later on. So a higher apprenticeship is a level four and a degree apprenticeship is a level five, but you can do them all the way up to master's level seven. Um, you've also got HNC and HND, so higher national certificates, higher national degree courses. Now, these are job related qualifications. Um, HNC is a year, HND is two years. And again, you can top that up by then going into a full university course at um, second or third year stage. Uh, so those are your most common options and some of the providers will be mentioning those tonight. So in terms of your decision making process and how that now needs to happen, um, first of all, you need to research what course you want to do and have a think about that and where you want to study it. So what universities or HE providers you think are right for you. The process for that is to start by going to the UCAS website, watching some virtual tours and downloading the perspectives of different places, researching outcomes, uh, perhaps following them on social media and if possible, going to see them in person on some of their open days and speaking to current students. Um, once you've decided on your five or six different options, you'll then create an account on the UCAS website um, and you'll need to start preparing your application. You do have to pay to submit your UCAS application. I think it's something 20, 25 pounds for, um, for, for one um, application and about 30 pounds for a second. Um, and you'll need to include things on your application like your academic history and your qualifications to date sometimes information about your achievements and employment history. Often you'll be asked to put in a reference from your course tutor. They'll be asked to submit one and then you've got the all important personal statement. Um, now, once you've submitted your application, it can be quite a long waiting game, but then hopefully you will receive a conditional or an unconditional offer. Um, then you can pop in your finance application, reply to your offers and then obviously get studying for those all important exams to make sure that you get the grades that you need. Um, so in terms of key dates for your diary, now if you're looking to head off to um, university in September 2023, these are the dates that you need to follow. If it's the following year, add 12 months. Um, so first of all, the deadline for, for most courses, it's sooner for um, Oxford and Cambridge and some medical courses, but for the most part, the application deadline is January 2023. Uh, you'll then get a response from the, to those applications by the May. Um, late applications need to be submitted to be entered into clearing by the end of June. Clearing opens the start of July and outcomes will be um, posted on those later applications by the 12th of July. And then D-Day, 17th of August, A-Level Results Day, um, as well as other Level 3 qualifications. 
I just wanted to very, very briefly um, mention student finance. I think naturally in the course of the current environment with rising costs of living, it certainly is something that's that's high on on students and parents um, list of things to consider before popping in that university application. Um, so in terms of, of submitting ap an application, it goes into what's called Student Finance England by late May. You need to provide um, some proof of your identity, like a passport, driving licence, birth certificate, etc., and information on your household incomes. There's two different types of grants that you can apply for. One is for your tuition fees, which is up to £9,250 per year, depending on the university and the course. And then there's also a maintenance loan. Now, you can still apply for that even if you are living at home uh, with the limits there on screen. And it's slightly higher if you're moving away and if you're moving away to London. And if it's something that you are concerned about, speak to the universities in question, as some will also offer bursaries and scholarships. Um, lastly, I just wanted to very quickly before we come on to our presenters to mention some of the things that you might want to start thinking about now that could affect your applications and your personal statement in particular. Now, obviously, grades are the most important thing in most cases, plus your extracurricular activities and personal achievements. But universities will also be interested to see on that personal statement some passion, enthusiasm, understanding knowledge about a particular course, an industry or profession, something that shows that you've done some research, you've put some thought into it that will help your application stand out from the others. And for that, we would recommend using sites like Prospects, the National Careers Service and the Stockport Jobs Match website to start reaching researching careers as early as possible. Learn as much as you can about your um, chosen sector and understand the factors, maybe the current affairs, the political, legal um, environment that may affect that sector in the future so that you can show that level of understanding. It's a really good idea, obviously, to try and get some work experience. Now, that could be through volunteering. It could be through having a part time job. It could be having a work placement, an industrial placement, or it could just be speaking to a careers mentor. Um, now, as we mentioned before, we've got lots of virtual work experience opportunities advertised on Stockport Jobs Match um, from speakers for schools. Um, we've also got lots of part time jobs advertised on there as well. Ideally, you'll get some related to your end career path uh, but obviously if you can't even just general work experience will help you develop lots of um, practical skills and understanding and lastly just to say that this is this can be quite an overwhelming time you've got to do your applications you've got to do all your studies You've got to tick all those boxes in person in terms of personal achievements and you've got to make sure that you get the grades all the while perhaps preparing for becoming an adult and leaving home. And it can be quite stressful. Um, so just to say that if you are struggling a little bit, it's really important to know where to go to get support or to signpost your your peers and your friends to that as well. Um, so whether you prefer to chat, talk to somebody on the phone or text them, there's a range of support available for young people and you can find the details of that on our website as well. Um, so now we're going to come slightly later than planned um, to our presentations from our university and HE um, providers tonight. If you have any questions that you would like to ask to any of the providers, you can send them to us by email info at stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk or on social media on Facebook, that's at Jobs Match, uh, Stockport Jobs Match, and on Twitter at Jobs Match SK. This is a really, really good opportunity for you to ask those questions to somebody from one of those universities and perhaps get some top tips that might really help you with your applications. So please do make sure to take advantage of that and we'll be keeping an eye out for your questions and coming to them at the end. So first up tonight, we're going to have a little bit of an introduction from Anna at GM Hire. Um, so Anna, if you could um, pop your um, slides up for me now and I'll um, tee those across and turn your camera on for me as well. And I'll just let you know when those are on the screen. So just a little bit of all change, everybody. So just bear with us one second. Caroline, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I can't see you. 
Oh, OK, I've turned my camera off just because I've had some internet issues. Connection is quite weak at my end, so I thought I'd stay on, uh, but just keep it off. Is that OK? No, that's absolutely fine. We'll just see your presentation. So if you just make that full screen and I'll put that up for everybody. So it's over to you now, Amna. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Amna. I'm an outreach officer um, working on a project called Greater Manchester Higher. It's a collaborative partnership of universities and colleges in Greater Manchester. Now our aim is to provide impartial information, advice and guidance uh, to young people in schools and colleges. So a couple of things to consider. Um, I'll kind of focus on what um, you should consider, especially if you're choosing higher education. Um, so university admissions quite on the, you know, increasing the, uh, will become more popular, especially for certain courses such as medicine, dentistry, law, and certain universities as well, such as like, for example, Russell Group universities. They are predicted to increase in the next three to four years with around one million UCAS applicants forecasted by the year 2026. So if you are pl planning to deter uh, a year or a couple of years, again, the competition will continue to increase. This could mean higher entry requirements for those students who are planning to study at university. Now, more students you know at post 16 are looking at alternatives to university so they're aiming to look at work-based qualifications such as apprenticeships or high technical qualifications there are many benefits to these qualifications which can be explored but they are also very competitive and not as many compared to the traditional route such as the degree uh, route now Moving on to the cost of living uh, for students, um, many are opting to part time work just to support their university accommodation, day to day living costs, uh, with around 66% um, just to support and top up their income. So, if you are thinking of applying, again, this could be something that could help you build on many transferable um, skills and build on work experience as well. Now, some changes to student finance for 2023 starters. There are quite a few changes. Again, it's worthwhile to look into this. Student Finance Calculator is a fantastic site to go and explore. Um, and on there, you'll be able to find um, and use the calculator and find out approximately what you could be looking at in terms of um, your, your personal income, um, or sorry, your, per, uh, your parents' uh, income, which will give you an indication of your student loan, um, which would be a fixed, but also the maintenance loan, which could increase um, for certain students. Now, there are also changes expected. Um, so another um, good uh, good website is to use is the pay index. Again, this shows um, statistics of earnings over a lifetime. Um, now, these can again influence your choice, um, so the degree outcomes, but also the course um, location and um, what you're planning to study as well. Now, um, the value of HE is more than just monetary returns. It's quite important, again, that you consider what you're studying, why are you studying it, it's your interest, you know, you're focusing on something that you're, you're going to enjoy studying and also hopefully something you pursue a career in as well. Now, it's highly recommended to start your research now if you haven't already try and encourage you know any parents and um, friends teachers to again um, sit with you if you can but go through different signposting websites which I'll kind of suggest you in a couple of minutes these will give you a bit more of indication of what the course you could be studying will look like and um, you know on each university website you can find out a breakdown of what they will be teaching you year by year um, You'll also be able to find out more information on what students have gone on to do um, and many other things as well. Now, a couple of useful websites. So we've got the apprenticeship website. Uh, again, these will have updated apprenticeship vacancies available. Uh, worth something to consider. Again, these apprenticeship vacancies, once they they are usually taken off. Uh, so we've got the GMAX website again with more information on apprenticeships, what they are, what levels they are. Again, when you're considering applying, make sure you are looking at the correct levels. A lot of young students do mix up um, and start applying for level two. This is something you've already kind of achieved. If you don't need to consider that or you do not do not need to start a level two qualification for that particular career, then try and aim to go for you know level four qualifications um, UCAS again fantastic for more information which university is also uh, brilliant to kind of compare qualifications um, and courses by different universities so definitely worthwhile considering 
Um, if you've got any other questions, um, you can again follow up on our gmhire.ac.uk Ask Us platform. On there, we've got a range of different staff members um, who have studied a range of different courses um, at different universities and also have various different qualification experiences and so on. So again, any questions, please do contact us on there. We are completely impartial. We do also have our profile information on what we studied um, and so on. So again, you can kind of choose who you want to speak to. Thank you. That's all from me. I'll pass on to Caroline. That's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed, Amna. Some really good headline information there on important things to consider. I'll just leave Amna's um, contact information up on the screen. Oh, it's gone. Um, I was going to leave it on for a second longer, but it's gone. It's fine. Don't worry. I'll, um, show I'll share it in the chat box. Is that OK? That's absolutely fine. And we'll email it out to everybody afterwards. So don't worry at all. Thank so you. next up tonight, we're going to be joined um, by Julia um, from Manchester Met University, who's the first of our university speakers tonight. So we'll just give her a second uh, to share her slides and pop those on screen. Um, and I think that Julia doesn't have a, a camera in operation tonight. So I'll just go full screen on the slides for her and I'll pass you across to Julia now. Thank you. Sorry, can you not can you not see? Oh, hang on. Sorry. Are you? Oh, sorry. I just can can't you... see your full screen. If you okay, can you see on. my can you see my camera? Yeah, fab. Uh, no, I can't. I can't see your camera. You need to. Um, there you go. You need to share your full screen. That's yeah. it. That's perfect. Yeah, there we okay. go. Thank you. I do, I do have my camera on, so hopefully you can see me. Um, but anyway, it's lovely to be with you all this evening. Um, I'm here from Manchester Met University. Um, Caroline's already mentioned um, an overview of kind of courses and what they involve, so I won't go into too much detail on that just to kind of avoid repeating. Um, but just to mention, oh, sorry, why is it? Um, we are sorry, I don't know why there's sound on that, um, but Manchester Met, we are a campus based university within the heart of Manchester. So we are based right on the um, Oxford Road corridor and um, this is our All Saints campus. So you can see kind of the top left building. That's our business school and all the buildings were, are within uh, just one or two minutes walk and we are very close to the city centre. So it's a great, um, you know, kind of university, great student city um you know you're b b growing up and living in greater manchester there are lots of opportunities for you uh within greater manchester for moving into higher education um if you are choosing to stay locally um so you know within about 10 minutes you can be in town um but you're you know on a campus um, with lots of other students. There are about 34,000 students at Manchester Met. So we are a very large university um, with a very diverse uh, student population. <clears throat> so in terms of the types of courses that you can study at university, Caroline's already mentioned, but at Manchester Met, we offer um, <clears throat> the students the opportunity to study foundation years. So this is the equivalent to kind of year zero and you would do this before moving on to your bachelor's degree. So your bachelor's degree is your first degree, typically three years or sometimes longer, depending on the subject that you're studying. We also offer integrated masters and master's degrees. Um, so this is uh, what we call postgraduate or kind of um, but yeah, postgraduate study. So again, this is optional, um, but a master's degree would be after your first degree, after your bachelor's degree. And we also are the largest provider for degree apprenticeships within Greater Manchester. And um, so degree apprenticeships are a combination of working and studying. So a real range of op options available for you at Manchester Met University across a, a range of subjects as well. Um, and a lot of our courses offer the option for students to study abroad as part of their studies and also to take part in a placement year where you would be work going to university for two years. You would spend a year working in the industry related to your course and then you would go back to university for your last year. So lots of different options available to you. And when you're thinking about university and looking at courses, definitely do some research about what um, you know kind of additional options are available to you. If thinking about studying abroad or placement years or doing a, a master's after your bachelor's degree might be something that you're considering. So in terms of the courses that we offer, this is just a very small selection, but just to highlight that when you go to university, if you're thinking about um, if you're maybe not quite sure what you want to study, there are courses um, that will be 
subjects that you've already studied potentially in GCSEs and um, A levels or BTEC, so things like English and maths, biology, um, business, for example. But we also offer lots of different courses that you might not have studied before, which is really exciting opportunity for you to potentially uh, go into kind of a new pathway in terms of your interest. So again, lots of different courses out there using the UCAS website or going onto the websites for different universities to have a look at what courses are available and also having a look at the entry requirements to make sure um, if there are any particular subjects that you need to be studying at A level or BTEC or any particular grades that you need to achieve to be able to move into um, this particular course. But just to kind of highlight the variety of courses out there. So if you are considering higher education, there will be something related to the area that you are interested in. So again, as Caroline mentioned, when you're applying to university, we'll be looking at um, your the, every course will have entry requirements, and this will be a combination of level two and level three qualifications. So level two, that's your GCSEs or an equivalent, um, and then your level three qualifications are A levels or BTEC or access courses, or there are various other level three qualifications as well. So your level three qualifications have uh, the across the board, they are standardized by UCAS and you receive a certain amount of points for each grade. So you can see on the right hand side um, that depending on the grades that you achieve at either A level or BTEC, they are worth a certain amount of points. So when you're doing your research, you might see that a certain course, for example, is asking for 128 UCAS points and you can see that an A and two Bs would add up to make 128 UCAS points. So you can go onto the UCAS website and there's a calculator that will help you start to work out what your predicted grades are and then potentially how many points that is worth. For your level two um, entry requirements as well, if you we want to make sure that you've got at least your English, maths and science at a minimum grade four or a C um, and certain courses will be looking for you to have five GCSEs at a minimum of grade four. So again, just making sure that you're aware of the entry requirements needed for a particular course. There are also some additional requirements when you're applying to university. So every university application will ask you to include a personal statement. And this is basically an opportunity for you to show off all of your skills and all of your knowledge and experience to the university um, so that for the admissions tutors who are making decisions about which students they'll be offering places to, you're highlighting to them why you would be um, a fantastic candidate and a, a great student on that course. Other courses, um, depending on the type of course, may ask for additional requirements. So um, certain courses, particularly kind of in health and social care, um, may ask for an interview. Uh, creative arts courses will be looking for you to have a portfolio, so a body of your works, um, photos and evidence of your, your creative skills and your ability to produce ideas and, and kind of turn it from idea into the page and developing your work. If you're looking at performing arts and uh, there'll be an audition as part of the application process. Some courses such as teaching or uh, health and social care um, may be looking for specific experience in that particular area. Certain courses may ask you to um, undergo a, a test. We don't have any courses um, at Manchester Met that have tests as part of the application course, but certain courses will. Um, recent study, obviously, if you're applying straight from school or sixth form or college, then you have recent study um, and then also DBS checks if you're going to be working with vulnerable people. So if you were going into teaching, for example, um, where you'd be working with children, then you would need to have a DBS check. So again, just being aware of the entry requirements needed for the courses that you're interested in. So when you're at university, there are lots of um, fantastic things for you to get involved in outside of your kind of your classroom studies. So um, uh, Amna mentioned that lots of students will be looking for part time work whilst they're a student um, and the opportunity to be a student ambassador is a fantastic um, experience whilst you're at university. It's a paid role. You're representing the university and helping out at various different events um, and it's kind of a zero hours contract so you can pick up work as and when it suits you around your studies. Um, whilst I was at university, I was a student ambassador um, and actually being an ambassador 
um, enabled me to kind of move into the work that I now do after uh, graduating. So it's kind of opened up lots of doors for me. You'll be part of the students union where you can get involved in lots of different clubs and societies. So if you already have certain hobbies that you enjoy doing or interests that you want to kind of share with other people, then there'll be lots of um, opportunities for you to get involved um, with all kinds of fun things outside of the classroom. Um, it, certain sports clubs or if you enjoy kind of going to the gym or all that kind of thing, and there'll be lots of facilities available at the union university as well to encourage those hobbies as well so lots of uh, you know all those kind of interests and hobbies that you have now they don't have to stop when you go to university you can carry on doing that and sharing it with other people that have the same interests and also thinking about where you're going to study as well as what you want to study so thinking about the city or the area that you might be based in Manchester is a fantastic city. There's lots of things going on. We're a very big student city. We've got ourselves, uh, the University of Manchester, Salford, Bolton, the Royal Northern College of Music. So lots and lots of students within the city centre. Um, it's a really bustling city. So lots for you to get involved in. If you're choosing to stay uh, more locally or if you're moving away, getting to know a new city is a really exciting experience. There's lots of support available for you whilst you're at university. Um, so thinking about when you're applying, thinking about whether there's any additional support that you may need and having a look on the university websites to see what kind of support there is on offer. So things like disability support. So this can be in the um, in the form of additional funding to support you. It may be if you need um, additional time in exams, if you need a note taker, if you need certain software on your computer, um, if you need any kind of additional requirements to enable you to um, complete your studies successfully. There's also financial additional financial support um, for students in certain situations. This is um, generally based on your household income, but there are also hardship funds if students do find themselves particularly struggling with their financial situation. There is additional support available at the university. We also have kind of academic support in terms of uh, supporting students with their writing or um, arithmetic or if you need any help with um, essays, the library has lots of academic support. Counselling and wellbeing, we have our student hub teams where you can go and book in for appointments and speak with a, a counsellor um, within the university and have support if you're struggling in any way at university. And we also have lots of careers and employability support as well. So helping you look for jobs whilst you're at university, but also preparing your CV and preparing applications for jobs once you've graduated or supporting you if you're looking for a placement um, whilst you're at university. So lots of support available to you and thinking about your personal circumstances, if you're thinking that there may be some additional support that you need whilst you're at university. Again, do that research and think about whether the universities that you're applying to will be able to provide that support for you. There's also lots of accommodation as well. So if you are thinking about moving away from home within Manchester, we've got lots of different student accommodation options for our full time undergraduate students. So moving away and living in accommodation, it's a really exciting opportunity to live with other students, develop your independence and, uh, you know, kind of really start uh, looking after yourself and, and living independently whilst you're studying. So um, you can have a look on our website mmu.ac.uk slash uh, accommodation if you want to have kind of a virtual tour or have a look around the accommodation. Um, and we've got some open days coming up, one on this Saturday. So if you wanted to get yourself booked uh, and come along, we'd love to see you there. Or we have um, the 26th of November. It's a, both uh, all three Saturdays. We had one um, just previously, but definitely do make the most of uh, open days. Universities across the country will be having open days at this time of year during the autumn period in the uh, lead up to the UCAS deadline. Uh, on the 25th of January. So I really, really would recommend if you can get yourself to the open days of any of the universities that you're looking at. As I mentioned, it's not just about what you're going to be studying, but where you're going to be studying as well. Um, and going along to an open day will allow you to look around the buildings, look at the facilities, meet staff and lecturers who will be teaching on the course, meet student ambassadors um, and just really get a feel for the university and start to imagine yourself studying there. Um, 
So hopefully we'll see you at our open day. If you go onto the website, you'll be able to book your place um, and then come along and spend the day exploring the, the university and asking any questions that you might have. And that is it from me. Thank you so much. If you do have any questions, um, I can leave my email in the chat um, and you can have a look on our website if you have any further questions. That's brilliant. Thank you so much indeed, Julia, for giving us a really good overview of everything that Manchester Met has to offer. We're going to very, very quickly switch now um, to um, Jane at um, Stockport College for our next presentation. So if I can ask you to pop everything on for us, please, Jane, and we'll switch you over instead. Um, so Jane's joining us from Stockport Higher Education College, talking to us about things a little bit closer to home. Um, so we'll just pop Jane's um, presentation up for you now and um, I'll pass you across to Jane. Hi, Thank you. Can you hear me OK there, Caroline? Yeah, all live. Thanks, Jane. Lovely. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, so I'm delighted to be representing the Trafford College group. Um, so my name is Jane Nickerson. I am the assistant principal for higher education and for Stockport College. So Stockport sits as part of the Trafford College group. There's a range of colleges as part of this group, Marple Sixth Form, Cheadle College, um, Trafford College and our, our Stockport College here that's local to you. So this is where I'm focusing on tonight. We're really talking about um, what we have to offer here at Stockport College. And um, so you may not know this, even though this is the local college right on your doorstep, but we do have a, a wide variety of degree level courses, including high, le um, high level apprentices. Um, so I know that Julia talked at length about entry criteria. So here at Stockport College and typically in what we call college based higher education, this is an alternative offer to your traditional university background. So students go to university to have that really wide experience with really large class sizes, diverse students from all over the country, possibly leave home really large facilities which are absolutely fantastic but in a college-based higher education environment we're typically looking to tailor an offer to students who are maybe looking for something a little bit closer to home a little bit more flexible maybe they're working maybe they're parents and they want something that's right on their doorstep where they can just drive and park in the car park maybe they've come to study later in life and perhaps they're not on course to get three a stars or um, you know, a really high um, entry grade tariff. That doesn't mean that they are not eligible to study higher education. And that's exactly what College Based HE is here to offer. So our entry criteria, we typically have a minimum of around 64 UCAS points, usually around 80 to 100. So that would mean when you're doing your BTEC, if you get kind of a, a merit merit pass profile, or you get two A levels, that certainly wouldn't exclude you from studying higher education with us. And um, you would still need your English and maths, but you just have an opportunity to possibly enter at a slightly different level. Um, you've also heard from both Amna and from Caroline the range of qualifications that you're able to study. We traditionally have a large range of um, higher national certificates and diplomas and the new HTQ which is the higher technical qualification, which is really being championed by college based higher education with that really kind of agile employer focused technical education. Foundation degrees, which allows you to sometimes bring your own industry skills already into the qualification or to learn those on the job. The traditional bachelor's degree, um, a one year top up degree. So for some students, you may be returning to education, you may already have part of a degree and you want to continue that and then obviously hire apprentices. So I really want to focus on the main reasons that you would choose to study here at Stockport College, right in this wonderful buzzling town centre. You know, we have outstanding student satisfaction. Our class sizes are smaller. You may not be in a lecture theatre with 200 other students, but if you want something a little bit more personal and intimate, our students really like that experience they like the flexibility of maybe being able to start their lessons after they've dropped their kids off at school um, or being able to get in and park in the car park and then leaving in time to go off to do a job in the evening. So flexibility is something that we really focus on here at Stockport College, trying to tailor the timetable to fit into the needs of the students. 
stay near, go far is something that really matters to us. You know, Stockport covers a large area, but you may live a little bit far away where public transport into the city centre just isn't convenient. So again, you know, we try and make our curriculum and our timetables really flexible to meet the, those student needs. In terms of the credibility of our provision, our degrees are awarded by Sheffield Hallam University, a highly respected institution. And so what that means is they say that our curriculum is absolutely in line with their values and their academic integrity. And we just deliver it here at our campus. And um, our unique learning environment, very industry focused with kind of state of the art construction, um, hair and beauty, IT, equipment and resources, really meets the needs of um, the industry partners that we work with locally here in Stockport. Being a supportive college is something really important, making sure that students who maybe come to us who don't have such confidence, maybe they struggle to engage or work with other students, maybe they come with issues from school. This is something that we really focus on. We're here for inclusive curriculum focus and students who maybe just don't feel ready to go to a large institution, really thrive in a small environment that we have. We have excellent progression. So students who come and study with us have excellent progression to either higher level study or out into industry related employment. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on. And obviously being employer focused is really critical. Employers are involved at the design of our programme at every level. Affordability is something that obviously in this really current climate we need to consider um, and none of our degrees or foundation degrees cost more than uh, 8,000 pounds, excuse me, 8,000 pounds. And so that's something that you may be considering knowing that you will have to repay these loans. So our tuition fees are just slightly lower. Just to focus just for the last few minutes really um, onto the kind of courses that we offer. So we have six areas of speciality here at Stockport College. So children, young people and families. So our courses here are about working with children and young people, early years practice and childhood studies. And we have a large provision here that allows our students to go on and work in these kind of roles, support assistant, nursery worker, youth and community worker, something that is on very, very high on the skills agenda in the Northwest. Creative industries. We have a very, very, very diverse uh, curriculum offer here, graphics and illustration, digital media development, photography and contemporary creative practice. We have a lot of students who come here with a very, very high creative flair and they find that this kind of studio based environment and small spaces works really well for that kind of provision. Construction, we have a bespoke building just for construction and this is where our higher apprentices come in as well. So pathways in building services, heating, ventilation, civil engineering and surveying um, are very popular courses here at the college. And to be fair, this is one of the areas that Stockport has built its reputation on. Um, and we work with such fantastic employers with Seddon's construction. And um, you may already know if you live locally that we're having a brand new building built. Um, and that's something that will be ready around December of this year. So if you did come to study with us next year, you'd be in the privileged position of being one of the first students through the doors of our brand new building. Engineering. Similarly, we work um, alongside many of our local employers um, to do have pathways in mechanical and electrical engineering. Um, so again, with all the construction and engineering being developed around the Stockport and regional area, these roles are highly in demand at the moment and a fantastic career choice for students. Computing and IT. We are focusing a lot of our energies in the new higher technical qualifications and um, cyber security, uh, network engineering, um, systems analysis. And these are two really high areas of development around this area. So if you were looking for um, a role that would take you straight into the industry, um, computing and IT is still extremely in demand in this area and something that we specialise in. And the last area of expertise for us is sport. So we deliver courses in uh, sports coaching um, and exercise. So again, if you have an interest in working in the fitness industry, then that's a really good option for yourselves.
Um, so just really to say how you come and find us, um, you can apply directly through UCAS or um, on our website at stockport.ac.uk. Um, our next open day is coming up in a few weeks, Saturday the 12th of November. You can register online or you can just arrive on the day, uh, meet some of our fantastic curriculum staff. And then we have another open day in June. Um, so coming in just under nine minutes there for you, Caroline. Um, hopefully you will have seen a little bit of a flavour about Stockport College and we would love you just to come and say hi. So thank you so much for listening. That's brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Jane. And just to echo that, that, um, you know, it really is a fantastic opportunity to have a provision like this on our doorstep. So do be sure to go and pay um, Stockport a visit and have a look around some of those fantastic new buildings that have, um, have popped up over recent years and some of those new developments to watch out for as Stockport continues to, to grow and evolve. Um, so just next tonight, we are coming to um, Hugh at University of Manchester. So I'll ask you to just share his slides for us now. We are running slightly late in the um, running order tonight, but don't worry, we will fit everybody in and hopefully run on time too. Um, so I'll pass you across to Hugh now to introduce himself and tell you a little bit more about um, studying at um, our other Manchester University. Hello everyone, yeah, so we are literally next door to MMU, so I have had students turn up at the wrong place more than once before, <laughs> uh, so hopefully we can point you in the right direction. So I'm Hugh, I'm from the University of Manchester, I'm very briefly going to give a bit, bit of an overview of what the university has to offer and what you might want to think about. It's quite nice to see quite a diverse mix of organisations here today, so you'll notice that we're all quite different, but there are some similarities between us as well in terms of kind of the things that we're looking for. So to kick us off. These are the three things that the University of Manchester is focused on. Uh, so some of the things that might make it stand out a little bit. So we're a research intensive university. That's we're in the Russell group. Uh, so we really focus on kind of embedding research into our teaching. So the way that we kind of evolve and change the subject and not just teach the same thing that's been done year after year after year. Research is really key to your experience as a student both in terms of the connections we have as university, but also the kind of opportunities that you have with links of industry and that kind of thing. Because it comes down to your teaching and learning experience, your student experience, because that's the main core thing that's really important. And so I'll talk about the breadth of the courses that we have to offer, this that kind of the scale of choice that you'll have as well. Um, but it's, it's kind of what you'd get to do and your opportunities that's most important to us. And then finally, we put social responsibility on there. And that sounds perhaps a little bit weird in the context of this presentation, but that means that we really want our students and staff to give back to Greater Manchester. Essentially, we want to make sure that they get involved in things, whether it's volunteering or work experience. But it's also part of how we look at the application process. So um, we at Manchester probably have higher entry requirements than some of the other universities uh, that are speaking today. Uh, and we want to also make sure that students have the opportunity to come to Manchester regardless of background. So we do take into account things like contextual data. We look at where students have studied, uh, where you're living, and we do take that into account in the application process. So even though our grades in some of our subjects might be really high, do look into kind of how we would look at your application and how would you take that into account. So in terms of touching on some of the stuff about us as a university and kind of how we're ranked, uh, so we're very internationally recognised as an institution, so we're the 28th best university in the world, uh, sixth in the UK, and that's according to the QS ranking, I just picked a ranking, uh, there's many others out there, you're more than welcome to have a look. And as I said, I mentioned earlier, uh, research is really key to the way that we teach and the opportunities that you have. And 93 percent of our research is internationally or uh, internationally excellent or world leading, essentially. So you are taught by the specialists in the subject areas that you'll be learning in as well. And that means that that ties into the kind of things that you're able to study and the topics that we're able to offer as well. In terms of giving you some flavour of uh, of the scale of Manchester, uh, so we have around 400 courses, um, just over 400 at the moment. And I looked at the A to Z and it is accounting to zoology with industrial experience. That's the A to Z and everything in between. So it's a real mixture of things. Um, we don't do everything, but we do most things. Um, and I'm sure there's a course that you'll be interested to you. Uh, we have around 10,000 undergraduate places a year, uh, but we do get around 85,000 applications. Uh, I used to do admissions, so if you have any questions for the Q&A at the end, please send them through our email uh, or, uh, add, um, or kind of add them via social media, and I'm happy to have a uh, deal with those at the end. But I've read about 15,000 applications in my time, so this is hopefully here to give you a bit of flavour for what universities are looking for, and if there's any questions you have, please do give us a shout. 
this is some of the courses that we do as i said so we do a huge range of different things um the most popular ones will be things like economics history medicine and particularly things like engineering computer science physics uh, but a whole range of different things uh, so do have a look at our website have a look in ucas as some of the previous speakers have mentioned and see what there is that's out there because we're on your doorstep we're not far away from from stockport um, so it's really easy to be able to get into the city of Manchester where we are just a, a less than a mile away from the very city centre. In terms of your experience of teaching and learning at Manchester, as I said earlier on, we very much focused on our research. So making sure that our, the academic staff that will be teaching you are able to kind of learn and develop and kind of find out new things. So you're going to be taught by the experts. We're really keen on kind of ensuring that you've got that peer to peer support as well. So we uh, we would have students who kind of in pre kind of who've studied the, what you're learning now in previous years to kind of there to mentor you and guide you through things. And we vary our learning and teaching learning techniques as well. So if it's uh, inquiry based learning or problem based learning or uh, much more interactive lab based work, there's a loads of different ways. However, is the best way to learn is what we offer. And there's a whole real mixture of things that we want to make sure that you've got the opportunity to do. Much of our teaching is obviously during nine to five, but our study facilities are accessible 24 hours and seven days a week. Apart from maybe Christmas Day, I think we've got our learning commons and library open most of the rest of the time. So you can really learn in the way that you best that best approaches for you. And there's academic support and staff that are able to kind of help anything that you might have on hand at all times. So you've got academic advisors that will kind of jog you through any questions that you might have. Uh, as we mentioned, we're similar in some ways in scale to MMU, but we are bigger. Uh, so we have around 46,000 students in Manchester, um, which does mean that we are annoyingly the second biggest university in the UK, just after UCL, but one of the largest anyway. But that we have a really diverse student population, so we have around students from around 160 different countries. So if you want to kind of get a feel for a whole different scale of things and meet people from around the world that you've never had the chance to do otherwise, Manchester's a really good bet. And I've mentioned a number of courses that we have and we're all on one campus. It's nice to all be together in the kind of um, on our campus just next door to Manchester Matt uh, and it all in one place. So it's kind of nice to not have to trek across any city. We've talked a little bit about student finance and I'm not going to touch on it too much, but these are some of the specific um, scholarships and supports uh, things that we offer at Manchester. Around a third of our students get some sort of scholarship or bursary that's non repayable. So it's money that you would have that you can decide to do uh, anything you like with. Most of it is through our Manchester bursary uh, and that's uh, basically part of um, it's kind of connected to your student finance application. And when we get your household income information, we just assign it. We just do it all automatically there's nothing you necessarily have to apply for but there are other ones that we have because we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to go to university if that's something that you want to do and some of these on the screen will highlight to you or point out to you when you apply in case it's something you might need to to think about a little bit further I'm not going to talk too much about Manchester because you guys are probably the group that knows Manchester better than anyone else. Uh, obviously, you'll maybe not been to campus or seen some of the kind of the educational side of things, but you'll know the feel and the size and the scale of Manchester. Across all different universities, many of which you'll be hearing from today, there's almost a fifth of the population of students. So it is a very a student city. So it is a really interesting and vibrant place to be. But there's tons to do. But Hopefully you've seen a little bit of some of it over the last uh, X number of years. And then finally, uh, just to kind of finish this whistle stop tour, there's many ways that you can engage with Manchester and ask questions, hopefully tonight. But also, if you have anything that you want to speak to, there is one on one sessions that me and colleagues in my team will be at. So Manchester Connect, if you Google Manchester Connect, you'll find sessions that we run as well as things like open days and virtual webinars as well. So there's tons of different ways that you can find out a little bit more and ask any questions that you don't get the chance to cover today. So I hope that was helpful and thank you very much. That was brilliant. Thank you so much, Hugh. I know it's such a lot to cram into a short space of time, so I really do appreciate you rushing through everything and giving us a really comprehensive overview of um, Manchester University. So thank you very much indeed for joining us tonight. And um, we have had some questions come in for you, so I will um, make a note of those and pop those to you um, over at the end of the session and we'll get through as many questions as we have time for. Uh, next up on our schedule this evening, we are joined for, uh, by Nikita from Liverpool, John Moore. University. So I'll pass you across to Nikita now and we'll add her slides up on the screen in just a second.
There we go, it's all teed up and ready to go. Thanks, Nikita. Oh, I'll just unmute you. Sorry. I th there we go. Morning. Perfect. Thank you. you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Sorry. So um, I'm Nikita and I'm actually currently a student at Liverpool John Moores University. Um, I'm on a sandwich here at the minute working for their outreach team. So um, I just I'm working for a year and then I'll go next year and finish my degree. And I'm just going to chat to us a little bit about John Moores and studying here. So we've been providing education in Liverpool since 1873. Um, so we really do have a deep history within our university. Um, this is something that you notice when you're walking around campus, when you're walking around the buildings. Um, and we are a continuously developing university and evolving. Um, and we have lots of ambitious plans for future, which again, as a student, is something that you really notice as you walk around campus. Um, so we have over 21,000 students um, at University uh, John Murray's at the minute. Um, there's around 50,000 students in Liverpool, so it is a really heavily student orientated um, city. We have two campuses which are based in the city centre, so everything's at your doorstep. And within these two campuses, we have five faculties um, which are again continuously developing and modernising just to ensure that our students have uh, the newest resources available to them. We have around 300 courses available for our students, so there'll always be something for um, everyone, whether it's fashion, zoology, science, maths, um, we'll have something for everyone. So um, I mentioned our two campuses on Mount Pleasant and this, our city campus. If you know these campuses, um, you'll if you know Liverpool, you'll see them around the city centre because like I said, we're in the city centre. Um, both of these are around five minute walk from a train station. So if you choose to come to university, but um, don't want to live in student halls, you can always get a train and it's not a 40 minute walk to your campus or your buildings. Um, it really is worth coming to Liverpool and seeing our campuses, seeing our campuses and seeing all the facilities that our faculties have to offer. Um, but like I said, we really are embedded into the city centre and everything is at your doorstep. Um, at John Moores, we do offer a wide range of study options which are based on Newcastle Orange, um, which have been mentioned by some other people, so I won't go into that. Um, make sure you do do your research in any course you're interested in taking at uni, as every um, university offers a different thing, even if they're called the same course. For example, zoology at University of Manchester could be a completely different course to zoology at Liverpool John Moores, so it's just worth having a look and checking it and seeing what the course entails. Um, we have options to study full time for three years or do something like I'm doing, which is four years, a sandwich degree, um, getting some experience and just learning for a bit and then finishing your degree. Uh, you can do a foundation year included in your degree, which is only one extra year of study. Um, these usually have lower entry requirements, so it's just something if you don't think you're going to meet the grade requirements, it's always handy to have the foundation year option. Um, we have integrated master's options, so you don't have to apply for a master's and you get the same funding as an undergraduate um, degree and obviously the degree apprenticeship route, which I'm sure will be spoken about later. Um, we also have options to study abroad, but I'm going to chat about that later also. Um, so like I said, we have so many courses you can choose from at John Moore's, so there will be something for everyone, but depending on what course you choose, you might only be in university eight hours or 15 hours a week. Um, so the rest of the week is yours to do exactly what you want. Um, which really makes our university accessible to everyone, no matter what you've got going on in life. You might only be in eight hours a week, so you can do everything else in your extra time. Um, we have a variety of learning styles available, so the courses will be delivered in so many different ways and you can learn whatever way suits you. Um, you could have presentations, lectures, labs, uh, work in studios. It all depends on the course you do, um, but you can you can study whenever you want and learn whenever you want. We have a lot of 24 hour um, buildings, so you can study in the evening if that's something that you prefer or something that you can work into your schedule. Um, it's all really catered to you and it's all based on your choice of how you want to study. Um, as independent as it is, you won't be neglected. You will always have support from your personal tutors. Um, if you're struggling with anything, you can always talk to them. They'll always be there to help you with any questions or queries you might have. Um, we have two semesters in every year, so you just work towards the end of each semester and that's when your assignments for that module will be and then you'll have your four month long summer again to do exactly what you want to do with your summer. 
um, at John Murray's, we have so much support available to our students. Um, as a student, this is something that I util I do utilise and have utilised. Um, and it really is important, no matter where you go, to take advantage of everything the university can offer you. Um, there's tutors available who you can create such a strong bond with. They'll become like your friend or your counsellor. Um, you can chat to them about anything, even if it's not study related. We have a student union here um, to support you and ensure you always have something to do. Uh, they run and host all our clubs and societies and ensure you're enjoying your time at university and um, help everyone socialise and get to know each other, especially at the start of the university. Um, I think last week they went to Chester Zoo, so they're always hosting something just, just to keep students busy. And we have our careers advice team. Um, if you're unsure about your future or if you want any advice on CVs or getting a job, um, obviously we've got our student engagement team and our disability support. Um, one big thing we have at Drummers is financial support available for students. So we have our student support fund available for any students who are struggling. Um, this is money that we give to you and you don't have to pay back. Um, it's all based on your own situation um, and your own bank. So if it's not means tested, this is not based on your parents, if that's something that might affect your student loan, um, it's all based on how you're doing. Um, and that can also help you with budgeting if that's something that you might be struggling with. And um, we have lots of study support available and health and wellbeing teams just to make sure everyone's happy and um, healthy and content at university. Um, all these support teams are really easily found in our student life building in the middle of the city centre. So they're really accessible to students and um, you can just pop in whenever you want to speak to them. So all our um, student accommodations are in the middle of the city centre and you're guaranteed student accommodation in your first year. Um, all our halls um, have the options of en suite studios or shared bathrooms. And obviously this will depend on the price of your hall. Um, I think our lowest price at the minute is £91 a week, but that includes bills, Wi-Fi, um, there's laundrettes on site. Um, some of our halls have gyms and rooftop terraces, study spaces and social areas. Obviously, this will all affect the price of the hall, but um, they do average at around £120 per week. Um, it's, just, it's just worth having a research about what student accommodation and which halls it is that you're interested in, looking at some of the reviews and seeing if that's somewhere that you could see yourself living in an environment that you think you'll enjoy. Um, and it's worth coming along to our open day again and having a look at the halls and seeing if you think you'll like living there because it will be your, your house for a year. Um, so we have the same tuition fees available and um, student loans and all as all the other universities, so I'll not go into too much detail about that. But we also have scholarships available at Liverpool John Mears. Um, these are between £1,000 and £5,000 per, per year. Um, it's just one application for all that you submit before you come to university. Um, so just include everything you can and I recommend just applying for them all. Um, the worst anyone can ever say to you is no. And if, if they say yes, then you've got free money in your pocket. Um, it's money sitting in a pot ready to give to students. So people just need to apply and um, if you get it, you get it. And if you don't, at least you know um, the worst that can be said is no. So it definitely is worth just applying. Um, and again, you'll get that every year of study so you don't have to reapply every year. We also have a bursary available to um, students with a household income below £25,000. Um, this isn't something that you need to apply for or anything. It's all based on student finance um, and you'll just get that in, in November and April every year. You don't need to apply for it. And it's extra money um, and it's completely up to you how you spend it or what you do with it because it is your money. So you don't have to spend it on books or anything. It's completely up to you. Um, I'm sure if anybody knows Liverpool, they'll know that it's such an amazing city. Um, it's such a heavily student populated city and there's always something to do. Um, being a student in Liverpool, in Liverpool is completely different to visiting Liverpool. Um, it's a completely different experience. You really feel like you're part of the city and part of a new community and um, being a student in Liverpool. Um, with all of our buildings being in the city centre, you get to experience city life and student life emerged. Um, and you really are a walk away from everything. There's so much to do for the students in the city and so many student events. Um, there's free entry into all the student nightclubs if that's what you're interested in or there's free entry into all the museums and art galleries. Um, Liverpool actually has the most museums and art galleries in the UK below London, obviously. Um, so there's so much history and culture embedded within the centre and so many events related to this going on um, throughout the year. Again, with it being such a heavily populated student city and um, there's so many jobs available for students, whether that's work in cafes or restaurants, um, we also have, we're related, we're working in partnership, sorry, with Unitemps. Um, so you pick your hours exactly when you work. As long as you're a student, you can work with them. 
I know a lot of other universities are part of this, so it's worth researching and seeing, but um, the pay is always very good for these jobs. And again, you pick exactly when you work. So it's um, it's all based on you and you can really work around your studies. Like I said, we have the most um, art galleries and theatres outside of London. So I mentioned earlier studying abroad and the opportunity to study abroad within the university. Um, this can be for one month, one term or one year. It is completely up to you. Um, we have partnerships with universities in America, in Canada, in China, in Europe, Malaysia and Japan. We even have some in Ireland if you'd want to go to Ireland. Um, but um, and it's accessible to everybody because it's completely funded. So um, so your household income shouldn't affect it because um, your tuition fees will be covered. You'll get money for accommodation, money for food, for social activities and just your general day to day living. Um, and it really is worth doing because, like I said, you, have, you might only be in 14 hours a week and then the rest of the time is yours to explore a city and live in the city completely paid for in a different country. Um, so Liverpool John Moores has such a high rate of employability after university because of everything that I've spoke about. Um, all our modules um, and learning is based around employability and we have employability mo modules. There's so many practical elements to every course that we teach um, just so that students are able to leave university with experience and not just knowledge. Um, so you'll have experience in your field, practical experience. The first time you're doing something um, will be in university and not on the job. Um, so it always helps just to have that extra bit of experience. We also have so many opportunities to work and gain connections while in university, doing things like what I'm doing um, and all the elements of our student support like that I mentioned are another reason why we have such high employability. Um, this helps keep our students motivated throughout university, helps me be motivated anyway um, and get really gives us a drive to do our best and be the best that we can be. Um, and this obviously ultimately leads to more success and better employment after university. Um, so I'm just going to plug our open day. So if you want to come along and see Liverpool John Moores University for yourself, explore the city and see everything we have to offer, all our fa uh, facilities and faculties, it's really worth coming along on one of these dates and seeing the university. So thank you. If anyone has any questions, feel free to email them and I'm sure we'll get you an answer. That's brilliant. Thank you so much indeed, Nikita. Much appreciated. And there's still time to get over there for this open day um, on Saturday this week. So be do sure be uh, be sure to check that out. Um, so last up this evening. Oh, sorry, we've got two more this evening um, to bring to you. Um, and next we're going to move over to um, Reese at um, Stafford University um, to give us a little bit of an overview there. Um, Reese, have you got your slides? Yeah, hopefully you'll be able to see them. Yeah, and are you popping on your camera for us or? Unfortunately, it's not working tonight, so uh, I will be talking you through everything and hopefully the presentation will make up for the lack of camera. Oh, of course it will. Right, off you go. It's up on screen for you now. Perfect. Amazing. All right, guys, so um, you've already had um, such an extensive overview of what higher education can offer from our previous amazing speakers. I will hopefully give you a bit of an idea what Staffordshire University in particular can also offer and um, as well as the world of choices that are out there in terms of the subjects that you can study uh, and hopefully a little bit of um, an insight into our campus and what sort of facilities um, and things that you can expect to see while you're a student. Um, so to start us off, uh, at Staffordshire University, we do have three campuses across the UK. Our main campus, where our majority of um, courses is taught at, is in Stoke and Trent, which is just about 35 minutes uh, by train direct and then 50 minutes by car. And um, so we are still quite a local university. Um, so if someone is considering commuting, it's very much feasible, but also if you are looking to maybe move away a little bit further from home, we're also a great destination. Um, we do also have a campus at Stafford and our Digital Institute in London. Um, and I'll give you a bit of a view of what our campuses look like um, right now. So our Stoke and Trent uh, campus welcomes you with a range of subject areas that you can study in. And as you can see, um, these really vary and cover so many different aspects and areas. So really, university and higher education um, 
offers choices for everyone, no matter what your interests are. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to maybe already spot a subject that you're really passionate about or that interests you. Um, and that kind of lets you know that it is something that you can consider in your future and, and move on to uh, within higher education and then make your career. Um, so that's the courses that are offered on our Stoke and Trent campus. And I'll give you a bit of a highlight and a bit of an insight into um, what our campus looks like. So a bit of a closer look at it. Um, so we do across all our campuses, uh, but we'll focus on Stoke and Trent first, have incredible teaching and technical facilities. So the highlight for this slide is our smart zone, which is um, a building uh, kind of dedicated to our engineering and computing students and um, it offers areas and facilities for uh, invention and innovation um, and as our previous speakers mentioned um, I'll, I'll follow up on it a little bit more um, at university um, it is a little bit of a different experience than what you might have so far experienced in, in your education uh, where of course you have lectures or practical tutorials however there is also an um, independent study time that you will be um, kind of expected um, depending on how many hours your course requires and um, to conduct in your own free time and we want to make that um, as easy on our students as possible. We want to make sure that you have facilities on campus that allow you to conduct that um, independent study time. Because of that, a lot of our buildings are open 24-7 um, or simply throughout the day outside of your lecture so that students can have that creative um, and learning environment to go into at any time. Uh, another uh, one to highlight is our automotive workshop um, for automotive and motorsport studies. This is just um, something that shows you um, that university also offers a lot of practical knowledge outside of just theory. Um, you may be assessed on a range of different um, kind of assessments and um, it could vary from um, you know, exams, major, majorly exams to kind of 100% coursework based courses as well. So you can really choose a course that um, assesses you on what you work with best. If you prefer writing exams and studying and that kind of more academic side, there are plenty of choices, but there is also um, courses that give you the opportunity to be really hands on and get that first hand um, knowledge and experience. Uh, our Stock and Trend campus also offers on-campus accommodation um, so you can go for your kind of standard halls experience uh, that a lot of students are excited about where you will be sharing your uh, kitchen and bathroom facilities with a larger number of students from 12 to 14 which kind of allows for a more social uh, environment and lets you make those connections from the very start of your university journey. Uh, you might also choose something maybe a little bit smaller, a little bit more home-like. Um, you can choose our houses which in which you will share a kitchen um, and bathroom facilities with up to six students. But also, of course, we do have an option of having an in-suite room where you can have that own bathroom space and then share your kitchen with a smaller number of students. This is just to make sure that we cover a range of options depending on how social um, or how someone likes um, their space at home, which is what your halls or your accommodation will become um, when, when you go and study during your term time. Uh, we also have our Stafford campus, which I want to highlight a little bit as well. So within this is our center of excellence. And this is where a lot of our health courses are also based. So of course they run on our main campus, but you do have a choice of kind of um, a different campus uh, depending on the experience that you want. So we teach midwifery, nursing practice, operating depart department practice and paramedic science, which are all um, very popular and very kind of um, uh, competitive courses, uh, but they are great and popular options as well. And within this, um, a bit of more of a look into what your lectures might look like. And we have specialist technical facilities. And um, here highlighted is one of our 
clinical simulation suits for our nursing, midwifery and paramedic students, um, which are really purpose built um, kind of simulation facilities that give you an insight of what working uh, in a real healthcare environment would be like. So you really get that practical knowledge and um, university is all about exciting challenges and getting as much knowledge in each area as possible. Uh, we also have our London campus, which is uh, our uh, kind of centre for digital digital innovation. And it is, it is our most modern campus. So the courses that we offer here are computer games, design, computer science, concept art for games and film and cybersecurity. So for anyone who might want to have that London and big city experience, you know, moving further away from home, it's also absolutely not an option. Um, we have state of the art facilities within here as well, such as our esports area, um, that's kind of a broadcasting and live events um, place. Um, and then uh, kind of study and relaxation spaces such as our digital loft. So it is a very exciting and modern campus for someone who might be looking uh, for that sort of environment for their studies. Um, so just to give you uh, a bit more information about us uh, and about what is good to consider when choosing university. Um, obviously, you've got a couple of our um, kind of uh, accolades and um, the fact that we're um, the top five UK university um, according to the Student Crowd uh, Awards. But apart from that, um, our campus um, and Stoke and Trent is one of the most affordable places to live in the UK for students. Uh, and as I said, it's still close enough to um, to home to Stockford where you could commute, uh, but also our campus is very central where we have um, on campus accommodation, but also every building is within walking distance from each other. So you're also kind of saving on those commuting in between lecture costs as well. Uh, and then just to highlight ways that you could get um, involved within university and get a taste of what university is like. And I'm sure other universities um, will present uh, different events that might give you a taste of uni life, which is what uh, our three day kind of action packed event um, is. So if you are a year 12 or a level three student and you're looking for maybe a little bit of adventure or new experience uh, during summer, we do offer an event where you can get onto campus and stay in our halls um, with other students your age, meet new friends, socialize, but also really get a taste of what it would be like uh, studying at university, you know, getting those three days to get uh, an amazing experience and discover whether university and higher education is for you. Um, and then lastly, I will also mention some of our open days. Um, as you can see, uh, they range across different dates um, on our different campuses. Uh, but as our previous speaker said, uh, open days are such an amazing opportunity for you to get onto campus, really get a taste of um, the lectures, the lectures and the campus and what sort of environment it is. And I think it's the best way to really choose which university, um, city, location, um, or course is the right fit for you. So definitely use this time, um, you know, if you're in year 13 before uh, that application deadline, um, or if you're kind of in, in um, younger years, you've got a couple more years, use as much time as you can to research, to visit places and really find out what it is that you can do in your future. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully that gave you um, a bit of a view into our campus and I'll hand back over to Caroline. Yeah, that did indeed. Thank you very much indeed, indeed, Reese. And that sounds like an absolutely fantastic opportunity to come and get a sneak preview of the university before you start. So thank you for telling us some more about that. Um, last but not least tonight, our final presenter is going to be um, joining us um, to talk a little bit about the world of higher and degree apprenticeships, which I know that we've had a few questions about already. Um, so I'll pass you across um, to David um, to tell you a little bit more um, from the perspective of the apprenticeship store here in Stockport.
Hi, I'm Dave Castley from Stockport Council and my team runs the Apprenticeship Store. Uh, the Apprenticeship Store is an online resource for the people of Stockport to give information, advice and guidance about apprenticeships. But what is an apprenticeship? Well, first of all, it's a job. If you forget anything else about it, it's a job with training. So it gives you the knowledge, skills and a recognised qualification. They last a minimum of 12 months, but the ones that we'll be talking about tonight, which are hires and degree apprenticeships, last longer. For example, the BAA systems over at Wharton, their apprenticeships, they take them right through and it takes about six years before they're fully qualified. It's full time employment, so you're earning while you're learning. You get all the rights and responsibilities of every other employee at that company. You'll get a nationally recognised qualification and it's flexible learning. So what does that mean? Well, you'll be doing 80% of your learning at work and 20% at whoever's delivering the training, whether it's a college or a university. And then you can progress further education within your career. So what are the levels? Well, if we skip further down because we're concentrating on the higher apprenticeships and degree apprenticeships at the moment. So the higher apprenticeships at level four is equivalent to a HNC. Level five is equivalent to a foundation degree. Level six is equivalent to a degree and level seven is equivalent to a master's degree. But we've also got degree apprenticeships. So you'll be doing a degree just like anybody else at the same university as anybody else at level six for a bachelor's and at level seven for a master's degree. So the higher and degree apprenticeships are a real alternative to traditional university study. Employers think that qualified apprentices are 25 percent more employable than those who took another route into uh, employment. Why is that one? Well, Everybody has a transition from either college or university into the world of work. If you're a degree apprenticeship, you've already done that one. So that's why you are more um, attractive to an employer and you are higher up the pecking order when you're looking to get into employment. Most apprentices, 83% say that their career prospects have been improved and on completion, 90% of apprentices stay with employment with 71% staying with the same employer. Why is that? Well, think about it. Your employer has actually paid for your training, so they have paid for your training, so there's no fees. They've also um, paid your wages for maybe two or three years. You are now fully qualified. You're an asset to the company. They're not going to want you to walk out the door to one of your competitors down the road. They're going to offer you a position which you want to stay with. And as I say, a quarter receive a promotion within 12 months. So degree apprenticeships, what are they? Well, they're developed by employers and universities and professional bodies. They are an opportunity to receive a full degree, whether it's a bachelor's or a master's degree, as part of your apprenticeship. So you'd be studying part time, 20 percent of your time at university, the rest of the time with your employer. You're employed throughout the programme. So your employed status, for example, from day one and you're paid a wage throughout the apprenticeship. You get a full degree without needing to pay any student fees and getting into debt. That's covered by your employer. Your employers pays the, the, the fees for your course. You get a head start in your chosen profession. You're already working in the industry. Again, you're going to be more attractive to an employer because you've already got that work experience of working in the industry. So you can get the skills to take you on to graduate and postgraduate um, opportunities that you're looking for. And like I said, you're paid from day one, so you are in a lot of a better position than other people. There are lots of opportunities within apprenticeships. Look at your options, do your homework, see whether there is um, an opportunity to go through a degree apprenticeship rather than going to university if that's what you want to do. Do your homework, have a look, see what's out there. Now, the best way to look for a degree apprenticeship is on the national website. Uh, I'll tell you details about that one in a moment. Now, these are examples of vacancies as of today when we're actually recording this event. So the 13th of October, these are real vacancies that are live on the site at the moment. Um, there are 95 degree apprenticeships on that site live at the minute. And you've got things like if you want to work in the games industry, you've got a program apprentice. Um, You've also got working for big companies like Barclays. All the vacancies that are on screen are in Manchester. They're a train ride away. So these are vacancies that are live at the moment. One thing to bear in mind, and if you take anything away from what I'm talking about today, this is it. 
get some help on doing your application. This is not an enrollment. This is an application. The vacancies that are on screen are for one position only. It's open competition. You're going to have to do CVs, application forms, cover letters, and also you're going to have to go through an interview and selection process. I've been doing recruitment for apprentices for a number of years, and I can tell within a moment of picking up an application or opening an online application whether somebody's got help on. And if somebody comes for an interview, within about two or three minutes of that interview starting, I can tell whether they've got support. The difference is that marked. What I would certainly do is go on the Jobs Match site because there are resources available there. They can help you about how to write a proper application, how to develop your CV, what kind of things to think about with an interview, what questions will you be asked? Because you are in open competition. There are a lot of people out there looking for these opportunities. So do yourself a favour, give yourself the best chance to get some of these opportunities. Now, finding an apprenticeship. Now, this is the government website. Um, to actually get onto any search engine, if you type in finding apprenticeship, you'll be able to get to it. Click on the one that says gov.uk. It's the national site where all the vacancies are on. You will need to register on that site to get on and apply for these vacancies. Now, there's two ways of applying for them from that site. Either you apply directly on that site and there's an online form to fill out, or you are taken to the employer site or the university site and you apply through that. Now, the selection criteria or the criteria for getting on these courses and apprenticeships will vary from vacancy to vacancy. It depends on what the employer is looking for and it also depends on what the university is looking for. So you'll need to read that vacancy to decide on how you put your application on. And please read that application because if you don't read it properly, you will not do a good application. I've lost count of the number of applications I've seen where it's pre pretty obvious the person hasn't read the vacancy. Look and see about what you need to put on your application. As I say, go to the resources that are available on the Jobs Match site that will help you. We can help at the Apprenticeship Store, which is um, basically online at the moment. So we've got our emails, we've got Facebook, we've got Twitter, we've got a telephone number you can get in touch with us. What we can do is either help over the phone or we'll arrange a Teams and a Zoom call where we will go through support. And that's for yourself if you're looking for an apprenticeship, but also we will talk to employers. Um, very whistle stop tour. There's more information if you want to get in touch, but now I'll hand you back to Caroline. That's brilliant. Thanks very much, David. Um, a really good guide to apprenticeships and some top facts there about how um, apprenticeships kind of compare to the traditional um, degree route as well. So thanks for running us through some of those. And as David mentioned, uh, there are, I think, about 55 um, apprenticeship opportunities on the Jobs Match website at the moment, um, together with um, a range of bite sized guides um, to how to apply for an apprenticeship. Um, and and um, some videos from recent apprentices as well to inspire you about what those career paths could involve. Um, so we've got to the end of all of our presentations for this evening. A um, couple of minutes running late, uh, but not too bad with an action packed schedule. So just to say a massive thank you to all of our speakers for joining us this evening and for, to you at home for um, kind of sticking with us um, and persevering through all of the fantastic information that we've had to present. We've had had about nine, ten questions come in um, that we're going to um, stay online and answer for you now. Uh, but if anybody has had enough and is ready to nip to the loo or make a cup of tea, feel free to leave us here. Um, if you have any questions that you think about later, you can send them to us by email info at stockport-jobsmatch.uk co.uk or at any of the social media sites on the screen now and we will be only too happy to help uh, whether that be to point you in the right direction for work experience help you with your cv and personal statements or talk to you about career mentoring um, and how to find a part-time job so thank you very much for joining us this evening um, and hope you found it incredibly useful <laughs>